I'm currently standing on one of the most unique and distinctive landforms that can be found in the Maldives. This behind me is a sandbank. It's a big favorite for all the tourists because, well, it makes beautiful photos. But if we believe science and scientists, it is a do or die situation. And residents there are already seeing their way of life change. Then in the coming decades, such places will not exist on our planet anymore. Well, and this is how all of such low sandbanks and low islands look like in only a few decades. If any of you is wondering, then no, these clips are not made years apart. But I was actually lucky enough to visit the same spot twice. Once on high tide and once on low tide. But why I wanted to show you this is simple. The difference between low and high tide here is only about 30 centimeters or one foot. It perfectly shows that even a small difference in sea levels can cause huge changes on such low landscapes and therefore create this sink or swim moment for millions of people who live on the coasts. If we do not reverse this trend, the Maldives will cease to exist. So buckle up, as today we will have a closer look at the Maldives and try to figure out if this country is really disappearing into the sea. Many of us probably know the Maldives as one of the best beach holiday destinations in the world. And it's really no wonder, with its beautiful white sand beaches and plentiful green palm trees, it truly looks like a paradise. Yet did you know that there's another list that Maldives is at the very top of. It's a list that not many people talk about right now, but in the coming decades, it might become much more known because the leader of this list will literally be swallowed by the sea. The thing in question is called the list of world's lowest countries. And with an average elevation of only two meters above sea level, Maldives is holding the first place. Walking on any of the Maldivian islands quickly proves this point. It's literally the flattest country on earth and there is not even a single hill on any of the 1200 islands that Maldives has. I kid you not, the highest peak here, or as the locals prefer to call it, Mount Vilingili, is just a bump that sits in the middle of a golf course and is about five meters tall. Yep, if you need help visualizing this, then it's pretty much the height of us dancing on top of our van. Well, but why is being the world's flattest country a bad thing, you may ask? People have been living here for over 2000 years, and I'll be honest, life on such paradise islands is not too bad. Yet in the last decades, a new threat has risen that brings anxiety to the minds of many locals. Fear is rising that the seas surrounding it could eventually wipe the lush tropical paradise right off of the map. By now, there's pretty much no scientist left in the world who would deny climate change and its effects on the nature around us. The wind is stronger. Monsoons and tropical storms are more frequent. And although in the last hundred years, the average temperature on Earth has only changed about one degree, then still, it has brought with it many big changes. It's very hot. Where's the witch? Very hot. Probably being the rapid melting of our polar ice caps and glaciers. In my years of travels, I have been lucky enough to visit few of such places myself. And the story from locals always seems to be the same. This glacier that you see over there, only 18 years ago, in 2004, I was here, about 300 meters back. I'd say 300 meters, maybe 200 meters. The ice has retreated in only 13 years. I've seen it in New Zealand, I've seen it in Iceland, now here in Bolivia. Makes you a little bit sad to realize that we're losing glaciers from, from our planet. With every year, we lose more and more of our ice. But what gives Maldivians anxiety 
is not the ice itself. Many of them have never seen that cold stuff in their life. But for them, more important is where the meltwater goes. You see, for more than 150 years now, people have been measuring sea levels all around the globe. And the data quite clearly shows that the sea levels are rising. In the century between the 1900 and 2000, the average rise was between 1 and 2 millimeters a year, which honestly doesn't sound too bad. And according to the research done, might even be called normal. But when we look at the numbers from the last decade, between 2013 and 2022, the story suddenly changes. The average water rise between those years was 4.6 millimeters. And this speed is growing as we speak. Some of the experts are now even predicting that by year 2050, about 80% of the Maldives might be underwater. Global sea levels rise nearly three to four millimeters per year. At this level, the Maldives could be completely submerged by 2100. Hmm. I wonder if that's the reason why resorts are building their villas on high wooden legs. So far, we've talked a lot about numbers and graphs and science in this video, but I know that the language of science can sometimes be hard to translate into the real world. And this is why we decided to have a look around the islands ourselves and speak with the locals. Quite a few of you actually left comments under one of our last videos stating that uh, all that scientists say is a lie. And you even tried to give me proof by telling me that you've lived next to a sea your whole life and the water level looking from a window has not changed. You know, and this actually made me think that although I live in a country next to the sea, I also haven't seen the climate change. And it raised a new question like, can an individual actually see it? Or maybe I, and many of those people who commented just live in a very good place that is not affected by this cha change so fast. And we got the answer to this question quite quickly when we were there in the Maldives. The answers we got shocked us. <laughs> I thought it was hard, if not even impossible, to notice such slow changes as an individual. But no, almost every Maldivian has their own story about changing seas. Many of them used to live on small remote islands and were forced to move into the capital called Mala because the constant flooding made their homes unlivable. Others have shared stories of how their farmland got ruined. And to anyone who knows how to look, signs of their island shrinking could be seen all around us. And here we can literally see the, the tip of the island. Day by day, water is washing away the sand, taking away the land from from the Maldives. It was quite scary to hear those stories. For most of my life, climate change has always been a topic I have read about, but never have I truly seen and experienced it myself. Yet here in the heart of Indian Ocean, the locals don't have the luxury to deny this change. Many of them have never read or heard about those scientific studies, yet most of them have their own stories of how their lives have changed in the recent years. Maldives, together with countries like Bangladesh and Haiti, are in the danger zone when it comes to rising sea levels. And they are already paying the price for humanity's collective efforts. The weather in such low altitude places is more unpredictable and the floods occur more often than ever before. In a weird way, it was even refreshing to be in a country where climate change was considered as an absolute truth. Since 2008, when Maldives had their first democratic elections, they have tried their best to bring the world's attention to the climate emergency that is slowly taking their home. 
50% of the Maldives budget goes into fighting climate change, but that is not enough to tackle it. They literally teach sustainability and nature protection in schools from a very early age. I absolutely love to see such signs on the walls of a school. And even the first ever underwater government meeting was held here to bring attention to the grim reality that might be the future of this country. If Maldives cannot be saved today, we do not feel that there is much of a chance for the rest of the world. Unfortunately for the Maldivians, changing their own habits is just not enough to stop this change. Fast forward to 2050, what is the reality in the Maldives? Are you willing to take the Maldives as climate refugees? And I think that's the conversation that needs to happen. Yet what would you do if you knew that your home was slowly sinking? It would be impossible to just stand by and watch, right? And so from this point on, Maldives started to take action. Friends, just before I tell you exactly how Maldivians are now trying to save their country, I want to take a quick second and say thank you to all of you who have already purchased our Maldives budget travel guide. It's been crazy. We never thought that so many of you would be interested in it and the positive feedback, it's, it's just overwhelming. It's, it's so nice to hear that there's a market for people who want to travel Maldives cheaply. And the thing that brought me most joy was the fact that some of you are already saying you saved money thanks to thanks to our little book. So if you are also planning a trip to Maldives, you can check out the travel guide in the description below. But now back to the video. As I mentioned before, for decades now, rising seas have forced local Maldivians to leave their homes behind and move into the capital Mala. And therefore, the capital quickly became overpopulated. And in 1997, Maldivians started to build a solution for their growing crisis. This solution was called reclaiming land, and it literally means that they're pumping sand from the ocean floor to build new islands. By now, this process is happening on many different islands all over the Maldives, but most famous of such projects is definitely Hulumala. It's still a little bit hard to believe that this beach, this island, everything is man-made. By now, it's a home to more than 50,000 people, and believe it or not, it is still only half finished. And here we are at the end of a part of Hulumala called phase one. And this on the other side of the river is called phase two. Well, it's self-explanatory. Phase one was built first and already has like 50,000 people living on it. And phase two is mostly still under construction. The island is ready, but now they're just building houses for thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And that is not it. Right now there's plans to even build a floating city to protect them from the uncertain times ahead. Three months from now, the world's first true floating city will begin construction. Seeing how Maldivians are handling this situation actually gave me hope. It reminded me that so far in our recent history, Humanity has always found the strength and unity to make hard decisions. For example, in 1987, all the countries of the world came together and agreed on Montreal Protocol, which now protects our ozone layer from dangerous gases. Believe it or not, but now, only 35 years later, we can already see how our ozone layer is healing itself and how this meeting has probably made life better for every individual on our planet. Or of course, there's the example of how we collectively banned lead from gasoline. For decades, the oil companies tried to deceive the public of the dangers of lead poisoning. A study from 2018 found lead was likely responsible for 250,000 heart disease deaths per year in the US. Yet now, 100 years later, from the introduction of lead into gasoline, we can proudly say that every country in the world has now banned this substance from the car fuel. And even though the means of reaching the goal was different, 
both of these situations give me hope. I'm quite sure that sooner or later humanity will find a way to combat the current situation. But the more important question is when? What is going to be the red line for us this time? How many changes in our nature are we willing to accept before we change ourselves? From the bottom of my heart, I wish it would be like Montreal Protocol, where we trusted the science, took action about it, and can already see the results. Yet sadly, the current moment for me feels more like the situation with leaded petrol years ago. A situation where we let the same oil and gas industry tell us lies for decades, only to make few families a little bit richer. One way or another, we will find a way. And I truly hope that once it happens, there will still be few islands like this left in our world. <laughs>